Hello, my Dargon. This is Ivy, one and only Dragon Tamer Rays, back from the dead as it were, bringing you all another Tokyo Ghoul Rebirth analysis video of sorts, and we have quite a few units to go through today. Today we'll be going over the two New Year's units, being the Ken Kaneki and the Toka. After that, we'll be going over the exclusive Amon and Arima that came out around Christmas time. So, you know, without further ado, let's just let's just get this started. It's been a while. Let's get into this. Alright, first here we got the New Year's Ken Kaneki. He starts off with 9,000 HP, rises up to 10,000, 590 attack, rises up to a decent 990, 320 defense, rises up to a decent 620, 4 AP maxing out at 10, and 2 durability maxing out at 7. Overall, I see myself as a more of a support unit. I'll get more into that when we get into his skill. However, his stat line for support unit is actually quite good. He has decent enough bulk to survive a couple of hits, and even then his attack stat isn't that bad, so when you're using him to potentially build up other people's skill gauges, you know, you can get some good damage in between there. Overall, it's a pretty good stat line. Moving on to his abilities, they are as follows. Increases max attack by plus 400, increases max defense by plus 300, increases max HP by plus 1000, and increases evasion rate by 20%. Further increases his, uh, further increasing his overall survive ability by dodging them attacks. Ah, oh, and then of course his mastery ability <clears throat> increases your defense by 1.5 times for one turn after input break on a target. I mean, if you're in a pinch, I can see you using this. But overall, I, I'd say if, if you are planning to put dupes into a more stimulants, could go to 80. You don't necessarily need the mastery ability, but I mean, if you can, all right then. But moving on to the bread and butter of this unit, his skill. Increases the evasion rate of front row allies by 30% for 3 turns. Deals attack times 1.4 damage to front row enemies 9 times and reduces durability by 4. So he has an AoE uh, evasion rate increase. Which I will say, the evasion rate that he gives himself does stack with his 20%, I believe. If not, feel free to correct me down in the comment section below, but I do believe it does stack, so it's like a 50-50 coin chance of being hit, which overall is just somewhat great, and even then, like, I mean, any unit can, you know, use evasion. Like, just not being able to get hit, like, that's, that's decent. Of course, so the boss or whatever has, you know, like, hits you even with evasion, or nullify evasion, something like that. The ability is something to call like, something like that. It, 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 it's still a good ability, and the uh, I will note, um, again, correct me if I am wrong, but the reduces durability by 4, I believe, is just AoE, so that's an AoE just reduction of durability, which is interesting. I'll say that. It's pretty interesting. Uh, moving on to his damage output, because he does surprisingly do damage. Um, not a lot of damage, but I mean, it, 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 it's an alright chunk. We will multiply the 990 by 1.4, multiply it by 9, and... In total, we get 12,474 damage, which I will say can go higher if you have someone like Festival Toka, or Light High Say buffing him, or just a buffer in general. Right after Kaneki, we have Toka. She starts off with 7,940 HP, 550 attack, increase that to a decent 950, 440 defense, increase that to a, a decent 8. 40, 5 AP increasing to a total of 12 AP, pretty decent, and 1 durability increasing to 9 thanks to weapon upgrades and one of her abilities, which picks that up quite a bit. Again, like the Kaneki here, the stat line is pretty decent again, she's a bit more of a support unit but can deal a bit more damage, but I will say out of personal opinion, I do feel like the Kaneki is a bit better than this token, overall usability as a support. But I mean, again, if you're a Toka fan, she's looking kind of cute. Hmm. Moving on to her abilities. They are as follows. Increases max attack by plus 400. Increases max defense by plus 400. Increases max durability by plus 4. And increases critical hit rate by 20%. Again, further proving that she can indeed deal damage. And her mastery ability even furthers this by increases your attack by 1.5 times for one turn after inflicting break on a target, which I will say increases to attack given by abilities, this also includes mastery ability, does stack with attack buffs given by skills. So 
new information for me. You know, I, I, I was kind of already knowing that, but I got confirmed a little earlier on today, so... That's interesting. So we'll be adding that to our calculations when going for her overall damage towards the end. Speaking about her skill, her skill is as follows. 1.5 times your attack for 3 turns, so she does give herself an attack buff. So keep that in mind. 0 0.5 times the attack of one enemy for 2 turns and deals attack times 1.2 damage 9 times. Now going back into her... she does buff her own attack. Which means if you do give like an attack buff of 1.75 from like Light Heisei, she will override it at 1.5, so I don't necessarily think she's necessarily... Again, I see her more as a support unit. It's just that she's very situational, because overall I just don't really see debuffers really necessarily needed in a lot of maps. I don't know, that could, just, that could be just me. That could be just me. But moving on to her damage calculations, because she does decent damage for a support unit. Uh, 950 times 1.5 increases her attack to 1,425, then we multiply that by 1.29 times, and we get a total of 15,390. If you happen to give her the break for, you know, whatever reason, because there are some other units into the future, and even out right now, that I would prefer to give the break to, but again, if you want to, we increase that 15,000 by 1.5, and in total we get 23,085, which again, decent damage output, it's just, I don't know, she just kind of rubs me the wrong way, I, it's just a weird setup, it's, it's not my cup of tea, but if you're interested, there you go. Continuing on to a unit that was released quite a bit ago actually, around Christmas, hmm, I should probably get to these sooner, shouldn't I? Anyway, this Amon starts off with 10,500 HP, increased to 12,500, that's a, quite a bit of HP. He has a flat 1,400 attack, which I can I just say that's freaking amazing. Just, mm, ah, 600 defense, which is already pretty decent for an attacker, increased to a whopping 1,000. Mm, God, this boy's bulky. 5 AP increase it to 10, and 6 durability maxing out at 12. As most exclusive units are going to be in the future, this guy... Oh my god, this Amon's stat line is just monstrous. He has monstrous HP, monstrous attack, monstrous... Okay, his defense is above average, I'll say. And then even then, he just has a decent just AP and like a good amount of durability. It's just... Mm, mwah, 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 mwah. Mm, love him. Moving on to his abilities, increases damage versus strength types by 1.6 times, increases max defense by plus 400, increases max HP by plus 200, and increases block rate by 30%, giving him even more survivability on top of his already high defenses. Mmm, I've already said how much I love this boy. Mmm, I'm onto good boy. His mastery ability is increases your attack by 1.8 times for one turn after inflicting break on a target. These are the multipliers I am looking for when I want to inflict break. Sorry for clapping in your ears, guys. It's just... I love this Amon. If you, if you can't tell, people who follow me on Twitter, you know I pulled him. Like, I got him. It's just... He's a good unit. <laughs> Moving on to his ability. Two times your attack for three turns. So, you know, he doesn't need to be buffed. Deals attack times 2 damage to front row enemies 6 times, reduces durability of 1 enemy by 7. Oh my god, let's just get into his damage output. I will say I will not be adding the 1.6 multiplier to if their strength, partly because, again, it's very situational, and if I do, we'll have like 7 different... Okay, several, not 7, but... Figure of speech here, we'll have multiple different outcomes of damage, and I just want to stick to a more cohesive story point, so I think I'm going to skip multiplier increases depending on type, but you know, if you want to know, just add in the 1.6 times to the end of whatever, ha you know, answer you want to go with. So he has 14, th mm, not 14,000, oh my god, 1,400 attack multiplied by 2 making it 2,800, then we multiply that by 2 multiplied by 6, and we get a whopping 33,600 attack! That's AoE, and then, if you got his mastery ability, 
and you freaking, you know, get a break with him on that turn, increase that by 1.8 times. 60,480. I will put this in retrospect that he does over 90k damage to strength types. If, well, <laughs> You know, if, there, if you add that 1.6 multiplier to that 60,000, but, you know, mm, mm. let's go, let's go over another monster, shall we? Okay, now let's get into this monster known as Light Awakening Arima. So with his base stat, he has a decent 8,000 HP, 680 attack, increased to 880. 420 defense increased to a pretty good 920. 5 AP maxing out at 12, and a measly 1 durability, but thanks to weapon upgrades and one of his abilities, it maxes out at 10. You might be thinking to yourself, this is some pretty underwhelming stats, seeing as how he's supposed to be a, well, hmm, damage dealer. Um, not really, he's the weight in unit, which. I'll get more into that when we get to, well, his skills. Moving on to his abilities. Increases max attack by plus 200, increases max defense by plus 500, increases max durability by plus 5, and his fourth ability completely nullifies target's block ability for those pesky bosses that block, which I can't necessarily think of right at the top of my head, but I'm sure there's one or two that exist out there somewhere. Now, one of his main key points of damage dealing, or the very least well, part that makes him deal even more ridiculous amounts of damage, increases damage versus paralyzed characters by two times. He is a paralysis synergy character. So units like Fesrize, I think, paralyzes? Maybe? I know I know that Freeman Duel Eto has a chance to paralyze, and I know that Non Killing Owl also paralyzes, just. Other options, I don't think this way they get the paralysis, you know, bonus times two, but it might help out, maybe. Now, his first skill is deals attack times 1.5 damage to one enemy 10 times, and inflicts paralysis for four turns. We are not going to calculate damage on this skill, because this is not the skill that we care about. We care about his awakening skill, which is as follows. Dealers attack times 1.5 damage to front row enemies 8 times. A very good chance to inflict losses for 3 turns. Now, I will note, now that we're going to calculate the damage that this skill could potentially do, when you awaken a unit, most of the time they get a times 2 attack buff, as well as a times 2 to their gauge fill rate. Meaning there are going to be launching skills left and right, so you're most likely going to be able to use this skill twice in one turn. Possibly even three with the proper setups, or maybe if you're a madman. But, without further ado, we multiply his 880 attack by 2, getting it to a 1760, and then we multiply that by 1.5 times 8, and we get 21,120. And that's at skill level 1, because he's an awakening unit, and awakening skills do not go up by mastery level. So, yeah! Ah, that's pretty fucking decent damage, especially with it being AOE, and the fact that he can release the skill multiple times in one single turn. Or at the least it's easier for him to release it multiple times in a single turn. But, of course, if you add in the paralysis bonus, if you, you know, get him to 100% mastery, which one day you might if you do plan on putting a point for him, we will, he's a go, oh my god, speak dragon, his damage will increase to 42,240. 40, which is, wow, just, that's, mm. like, we'll be thinking, <sighs> I don't know how I feel about this unit, because the damage numbers look low, but not, they're not as, what the, mm, they're not what they appear to be, because he can launch the skill multiple times easier in a single turn compared to other units, because he's an awakening unit. I don't know. Awakening units are very iffy to me. I get their purpose and I enjoy using them, but sometimes I just feel like it's really hard trying to talk about them. I don't know. That might that might be just me, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Awakening units are just in a weird spot for me. It, it's weird. I think it's just bias at this point, but I think I'm going to end it here. 
Um, I'm, I'm sorry if I seemed a bit more hyped for the Amon. I will say this, if you are watching this video and try to figure out if you want to summon on the Amon banner last minute or the Arima banner, I will say go for Arima if you are free to play because he's just better out the box. Like, you can use him right away. Amon does take quite a few dupes before he starts, you know, becoming really good. Uh, while Arima, on the other hand, since he's Awakening Unit, he is the edge of just being better out the box. So, that's why Two Cents is. However, for me, I did summon for Amon because it was guaranteed SSR and I did it off screen and I got two copies of him. And then Arima came, I'm like, oh, well, no, that was a mistake. And I'm not, I don't think I'm going to summon for Arima. Um, this is just personal bias because I have an inkling that a certain New Year's Rize, you know, a one of, you know, a highly sought after support unit on Invoke is coming out soon. And if you're wondering what she does, she will multiply your attack and defense of your front row allies by 1.75. I think she also gives increased durability? Correct me if I'm mistaken? But that's what I'm waiting for right now. Um, I might summon for Arima if he's there and I get the Rize within a couple of pulls, but I'm not going to hold my luck there. But if you did enjoy today's video, feel free to leave a like down below. And do not forget to follow me on Twitter. Link is down in the description below. And as always, if I got anything wrong or you know, even what your two cents, you want to sell, you know, like a Rima to me more, feel free to, you know, leave your opinions about these units in the comments section below. It's just some of them, I will say, to, they appeal to me more. Like, I, I will say, I try to be as unbiased as possible, but at the end of the day, we're human beings and bias is in our blood. So, goodbye! Hello, welcome to the end of the video. While you're here, why not check the two videos here right in front of you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to follow my Twitter, link down in the description below, for all future updates. Goodbye!